The Buffalo Bills get ready for the 2024 NFL Draft. Build around Josh. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Buffalo Against the World. This is Buffalo Against the World Sports Talk with Kunu and Cousin Brad. Bills Mafia. It's our time. Act like you know, baby. Act like you know. Welcome, welcome, everyone, to another edition of Buffalo Against the World. And with me, as always, is my cousin, Cousin Brad. We are back in the building, cuz. Cuz, man, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Welcome to Buffalo Against the World with Kulu and Cousin Brad. Uh, first off, before we get started, man, before we get started talking about bills and everything, I just want to give a shout out to a Strong Memorial Hospital in Rochester, New York. Uh, eight years ago today, they gave my son heart surgery, saved his life, and he is absolutely doing wonderful. So shout out to Strong Memorial Hospital before we even start. Shout out to them. Shout mm-hmm. out to shout out to nephew, man. Glad you are still here with us, giving us those wonderful smiles and doing all those yeah. wonderful things that you're doing in this world, man. Appreciate that. So, Cousin yeah. Brad, with no further uh, to do, uh, why don't you take us around the league, what's happening around the league, what's happening with the Buffalo Bills, and let's start with Absolutely. some breaking news. Let's go around the league. We're going around the league. A lot has happened today. All right. Let's go on around the league. First off, I want to announce the Eagles that they have gave a uh, wide receiver Devontae Smith a three-year contract extension with the Philadelphia Eagles, making him an Eagle until 2028. Shout out to Ohio State. Um, uh, Colts defensive tackle DeForest Buckner agreed Monday to a two-year deal for $46 million, uh, making him a Colt until 2026. Uh, Bengals put a franchise tag on wide receiver T. Higgins, who requested a trade last month. Uh, they anticipate that he will not be showing up to uh, Bengals voluntary offseason workouts, which I don't think he did today. Um, so nothing there. Uh, another wide receiver and some contract dispute issues. Wide receiver Justin Jefferson entering the last year of his contract, uh, scheduled to be paid $19.74 million, uh, was not present this morning at uh, Vikings voluntary offseason workout today. So, I mean, hey, I don't know what's going on. They better fix it. Somebody going to snatch him up. Primetime player. Uh, this is some legal news, legal news going on right now. Uh, Chiefs wide receiver Rasheed Rice and his friend Teddy Knox are being sued uh, in Texas for over $1 million in actual damages and $10 million in punitive damages for uh, being the, for by two people for being involved in the six-car car crash that occurred on March 30th in Dallas. I'm glad he's being held accountable for his actions. And, oh, yeah, the Jets have new jerseys, sort of. <laughs> I mean, they're the same jerseys that they had opening week, but they're new now. So, I mean, who no really? Cares. Cares. Yeah, no, no. I mean, anybody watching this, they don't care about the Jets. We're just gonna skip them. Go ahead. <laughs> well, let's show them for the sake of. Oh, this- look at those gross, ugly oh. things. Look at those. Ugh. You know what? You know, to be fair, you know, ahead, Brad, I think we can say this though, right? Let's take a page out of New York's book by going back to the red helmets, at least bringing the red helmets back. Please, please, Buffalo. Brandon Bean or whoever is in charge, please take a note. Bring the red helmets back. And not those whack 2000 jerseys that y'all did with the weird Drew Bloodsoe. No, Maybe not blue. We're talk- no. Yeah, no. <laughs> we all tried to be the Patriots, but y'all wasn't. Like, we're not talking about those depressing years. We're talking about the 90s. Bring those back. Hint, right. hint. Let's bring them back. See the hat? Hence the hat. 90s. We also <laughs> talked about, uh, Cousin Brad, the, the uh, sad passing of O.J. Simpson at 76 the years Jews. old, um, which yeah. is also breaking news. Um, and yeah. uh, Bill's legend, Hall of Famer, Wall of Famer. Yep. Um, yep. Hall yeah, of so Famer, we got Wall that. of Famer. Mm-hmm. At, at one point, O.J. Simpson was considered the greatest running back of all time. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Yeah. You know, O.J. Simpson, great, great Buffalo Bill on the field. You know, great, you know, USC player on the field and nothing else. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Look at that greatness on the field. Look at that. 
juice, look at man. that look at the standing juice. buffalo. You look at the juice. Oh, you know, a lot of people saying. forget that juice played for the Buffalo Bills. Um, yeah. you know, and, and at one point people were saying, I mean, no uh, no other running back ran for two thousand yards, as as Joey mentioned right here in the chat, that nobody ever did this in fourteen games. Juice was the only yeah. one juice in the electric company. So shout out to the exactly. juice, man. Exactly. On the field, on the field, 14 games, the only human to ever do that. This man had 14 games, ran over 2,000 yards. The Juice was an absolute legend on the field. Uh, went to USC. Um, rest in peace, OJ Simpson. Naked Gun movies. He was in Roots. And, uh, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. No, so, um, so right. let's, let's talk about this discussion here. Um, with our main topic of discussion is today, the 2024 draft build around Josh Allen. Again, we talked about Stefan Diggs last week a lot. We're not going to talk too much about Stefan Diggs, but building around Josh, the number one thing that everybody's talking about right now, cousin Brad, and that's receiver, the wide receiver yeah. position. We've got yeah. two decent tight ends. We got to have a rookie who plays spectacular. We look for him to be the number one target going into this season. Uh, Kincaid, we saw Dawson, Dawson Knox, what he can do when he's healthy. So hopefully getting those two guys back together, that you know they can go into that two tight end set that they wanted to do that last year, this past season. And we're talking about a wide receiver. I know a lot of people are speaking about Brandon Ayuk from San Francisco. And look, Cousin Brad, I really don't like that idea. I feel like if you were going to do that, you could have just kept Stefan Diggs. You could have just kept Stefan Diggs at least for another year if you were going to go pay a big receiver with some big splash money that we really don't even have right now. I say build this team through the draft. And as we're saying with the theme of today's uh, topic is building around Josh. Let these players come in and know that Josh is a guy. What's your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, uh, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, honestly, let's just look at it from a from a, I mean, just from a business standpoint. Josh is obviously the centerpiece. He is the glue to the franchise. He's the franchise player. You have to build around him. You just lost your second best player on your entire team, so you have to build on what you already have. Josh Allen is a prime time player. He's big time. He's the face of the franchise. Dude is absolutely legit. Um, you got a good running back, a good young running back in James Cook. You have a two great tight, two great tight ends, Dalton Kincaid and Dawson Knox. You have an upcoming star with Khalil Shakir, Curtis Samuel, veteran receiver. Don't know what you're going to get out of him yet. A couple of guys came over in free agency. Still got a good offensive line. Uh, defensive wise, you got a good core. You have Matt Milano, absolute stud. Terrell Bernard came out this year, did great things. Rasul Douglas. Uh, and, and got you know veteran safety, you know, veteran safety is coming in to the league. I mean, I'm sorry, coming in to offer free agency. So it's a lot of things you can do to build around Josh Allen. I don't know going with Brandon Ayuk is the best move right now with a lot of talent coming up in, in this year's draft. So I would say build in the draft as you could, like you said, a lot of draft capital that you have. And we talked about last week how this 27 million will be freed up next year. We right. hurt this year with that 31 million dollar cap hit. But next right. year, next year, it frees up $27 million if you want to get a splash player, a splash defensive end. If you want to get a splash safety, you can do that next year. I think there's this, this draft is so wide receiver friendly and so right. deep for wide receivers, wide receivers with speed, wide receivers, wide receivers with size, wide receivers with physical attributes, wide receivers with hands, wide receivers that can do kick return and catch the ball. So Correct. this draft is full of that. You have to get that this year. You're not looking for someone to come in and be a superstar. I mean, but you are looking for somebody to show you flashes of superstardom. Absolutely. And one thing you didn't mention is this draft coming out this year, a lot of pedigree, a lot of pedigree is in this year, up, upcoming in this draft. I'm going to read off a couple of names right now, and uh, we're going to go into the, what this draft as far as their uh, pedigree is. Jeremiah Trotter Jr., the Clemson standout, obviously the son of Jeremiah Trotter, former Eagle. Uh, Max Melton is the brother of Bo Melton from uh, Green Bay, uh, kid playing at Rutgers right now. Luke McCaffrey, 
obviously the younger brother of uh, uh, Christian McCaffrey, son of uh, Broncos great Ed McCaffrey. Uh, Chris Jenkins Jr. is the son of uh, longtime Panther Chris Jenkins. So uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., obviously Hall of Famer, Marvin Harrison Sr., who in my eyes, I think he's better than his father, but, you know, we'll see what happens there. Uh -huh. uh, Frank, Frank Gore Jr., uh, Southern Miss running back. Obviously, this is the son of uh, Bill's former Bill, Frank Gore. Uh, Keon Coleman is the cousin of C.D. Lamb. Keon Coleman, Florida State, Ke you know, cousin of C.D. Lamb. A lot of pedigree coming out. Joe Alt out of Notre Dame, big uh, offensive lineman, uh, son of the legendary Chiefs offensive lineman, John Alt. And obviously, Brandon Rice, son of the – probably arguably the greatest wide receiver of all time in Jerry Rice. So it's a lot of guys coming out this year, you know, with a pedigree of NFL talent. So a lot of Absolutely. guys you can go through. Absolutely. Shout out to Toke TV, Comedian, man, my man. What up, we go way to the hip hop. Way back. Comedian in the BI. What's going on, my brother? Uh -oh. um, but is. yeah, you know what? Um, I absolutely agree. You talked about these guys who got who have that NFL DNA, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. talked about Marvin Harrison. You know, he is a more of a freaker athlete than his father was. I'm not going to go as far as say what you said now, because Brad said he better. You got to be I on the field in the NFL to show you better. I'm I'm not a big fan of looking at somebody and saying they're better. I'm a fan of saying, okay, go out there and prove it. Show us that you're better, and then we can start talking about that. But, yeah, you mentioned a lot of good guys. But it's a couple guys you didn't mention that I really like. Like, I like Leggett, and we talked last week. And I said, if you can, get Brian Thomas Jr. at 28 and come back at number two and grab Leggett. I want both of them. I want both of them. These are two possible number one receivers. And what if you just hit on both of them? I mean, that would be a game changer. I mean, you got a physical beast. Both, both of these guys are physical specimens. Both of these guys got four three speed. You know, both of these guys could be possession receivers and deep threats. And they're both bigger, stronger, faster. Okay. I think that's perfect for what Josh would have on the outside. He tends to overthrow a lot of guys. And these guys can jump. These guys can leap and snatch the ball out the air over corner smaller DBs. I like those guys. And I would hope that we can grab one or both. I agree with you, but, I mean, at the same time, you don't want to overcrowd the wide receiver room here on this team. Yeah, those guys would definitely make an impact, you know, gives you some depth at the wide receiver positions, but there are other positions we can definitely go, as we talked about last week. A lot of people are talking about this kid, Chop, out of Penn State. I'm not a Penn State fan. I'm mm -hmm. an Ohio State fan, so biased, but – I mean, he's a heck of a player, had a great combine, had a great senior workout day at Penn State. I like what you know his measurables are. I like the stats that I've seen. So why not go defense? Why not go defense? Why not beef up that defense? Because, yeah, you do have Josh Allen. He's going to need people to throw to, but you got to stop people too. So I, w I don't see why you know bringing Chop in at the pick that we have wouldn't work as well. So I like both. I like both. I like going both ways with it. Yeah, I really like Chop. I think he's a freak athlete. Um, I'm a little concerned with Penn State running backs, and we talked about someone last week, which I, I won't mention, from Penn State, who the Buffalo Bills drafted a few years, uh, about six years ago over Ryan Arakbo. But I'm not going to talk about that today. But I mean, was that really an L? Was that an L, though? Because Brian Arakbo didn't kind of work out either. Yeah. Brian Arakbo played way, way better for Washington than – then Aaron Maben, I don't even think he recorded a sack. And maybe he did get a sack, maybe two. I don't know. But he sacked no. Ryan Fitzpatrick in the route from playing for the Jets. That's sad. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. All right, right now it's time for our Bills Mafia roll call. So let us know where you are. Are you in Buffalo, New York, like me and cousin Brad? Where are you at? Where are you at? And where are you at? Let us know in the chat. Where are you? We got Bills fans in Australia who done been on here. We got Bills fans in Jersey. We got Bills fans in Germany. We got Bills fans in Africa. Where are you in the world? We want to hear from you. 
Uh, we got Los Angeles in the house. Shout out to Billy Williams. He's in the building. We got Lockport in the BI. You know what it is. We got Lockport. Shout out to Lockport. Shout out to Lockport, 12th Man Mafia. Buffalo, New York, baby. You know what it is in the 716. East side. You know what it is. <laughs> you got Perry, New York. Perry, in the New BR. York. Okay, we see you. We see you. Love the logo. We see you on you. Thank you for watching us on YouTube. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, too, by the way. Please write like, share, and subscribe. We got Hartford, Connecticut in the building. You see the reach? That's Patriot territory. We reaching on their ground. That's how we do. <laughs> see the reach out here. Got Bilo in the building. You know what it is. Yeah. You know what it is. It's D. D, what up, man? Obviously. obviously okay, we got the Cave, Caveman Mike from Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Love North Carolina. Yeah. Shout out to them. Yeah. Raise yeah. up, baby. Yeah. Yo, Cousin Brad, this is one of my favorite parts of the show, just to see how many Bills fans that we got all over this country. Um, please keep them coming in. Keep them coming in. We're going to uh, make sure we keep posting. What's up, Nancy? How you doing? Let us know where you're from, Nancy. Uh, where are you at? You know, Bills fans, like, when you really look all over the world, you know, people have been vouching for this team to win a Super Bowl for so many years all over the world. And it's amazing oh, how many become a part of the bills mafia cuz absolutely absolutely you see all the youtube videos and you see uh, all the programs that you know talk about our fans we really uh, we're really a tight knit unit you know everybody wants to talk about cowboys fans and yankees fans which i am but you know the bills mafia is really something special about us you know when it comes together you know no matter if it's donating charity getting ready for a game invading other stadium nobody doesn't like the bills mafia as Lance, mom. Hey, Nancy, how you doing? Hello, That's our hello. Here at Built in Buffalo, shout out to my brother Lance and his mama. Hey, Mama's watching, Lance. It means don't you act up, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So it's it's a beautiful thing, cousin Brad. Um, yes. So talking about building around Josh Allen. Um, we also, we talked about the sexy positions, the wide receiver position. Um, yeah. Running back is also a need. Running back is also a need um, in this year's draft. I think we need another power back. Um, I like the time they're signing a Ty Johnson, bringing him back. He really, like I talked about last week, how, you know, as many times as I wanted to get playoff Lenny in there, Ty Johnson kept showing me why he belonged on the field. And I like him. I think he complements James Cook very well with the speed combination of speed and power. He has a lot right. more power than um, than James Cook has. But then mm. you you look at what we don't have. We don't have that goal line bruiser, um, and that's what we need. I think we need to look we for do. that. Draft. We do. His name is Josh Allen. <laughs> I'm I'm just being real. I'm just like you sitting here talking about that power bruiser running back guy. Honestly, honestly, let's just call a spade a spade. We don't even need one. We yes, don't we even do. need it. Let, yes, we do. We do, do we, we don't need it. We have Josh Allen. You literally hike the ball. He's six five. All he has to do is fall forward. And we got the first down or the touchdown. Like we don't need we don't need that guy. Well, I, okay, so answer this question for me. Answer honestly. Answer honestly. If it's fourth and one, fourth and one, right? Would you want to hand it to a power rookie guy, or do you want Josh Allen to plunge through to get the first down? I mean, having a dual threat is fine. That's great. But here's what I'm saying. Look, look what uh, Nickel City mentioned. Like, let's keep this 100. We talked last year, two years ago, about taking hits off Josh Allen because we see the toll that it took on him in the Cincinnati game, right? He yeah. came into this year, he wasn't being himself, and we, we we said, we need Super Saiyan Josh Allen back. Remember that? Okay. And he came back. He came back, but still, it does help when you have a physical presence back there that scares defenses too, because it can go either way. You know, that, that makes it easier for Josh to do a quarterback sneak if you have a physical beast in the backfield. So I, I think it can go both ways. I don't trust a physical beast. I want my quarterback to fall forward and get the first down or the touchdown. Like it works. Like it, it works. I don't I wouldn't mind another speedy guy back there. 
Let catch the ball up the backfield. I don't care for the for the for the big King Henry Saquon Barkley dudes. Let let I'll let let I'll let the Ravens take 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 care of that, bro. I want I want a dude I can, that Josh can throw out of the backfield, don't want to check downs and get us a couple of yardage. Them big backs like Jerome Bettis and all them boys like that, them them days are over. Them days are over. We got the quarterback to tush push and all that now. Like we don't need that well, no more. Here's the thing you got to keep in mind, though, um, cousin Brad. The Bills want to play a lot more twelve men, right? They they talked yeah. about that last year. They want to play that a lot more this year with the two tight end set. So right. they want to get more physical. They do want mm-hmm. to get more physical. So typically, you want a guy who can you know get you those short yardage downs. And you, like I said, man, you, as great as Josh Allen is physically running the ball. You have to take hits off them because we're going to need them for the long run now. We don't have two superstars like we had before on offense. We just got right. one now. So we, got we two. have we got to take hits off of him. We have to play smart. And it's just like anything else. What is Michael Jordan without a team? You need a team to do their position. You don't need a quarterback playing every position. I mean, I mean, he can, but you don't need him to do that. You need... Yeah, and we're going to talk about this later in the discussion when we get into, um, you know, what the Bills need this year. Um, oh, I think hold on, hold on, hold on. Patrick Mahomes just won. Him and Kelsey are the stars of that team. Mm-hmm. Aside from Rashad Rice, obviously, we know why we can name him. Can you name another receiver on that team? Nope, I you sure can't. can. Exactly. That's my point. So, like, yes. It's nice to have a compliment, a big guy to get those big yardage. But honestly, I want my quarterback to just plunge in there and get it. I, I can die on that. I can die on the sword. Like, we wanted Josh Allen to come back. I want old Josh Allen back. He arrived. He arrived and he came back and he was a super saiyan. And everything was fine. Everything was fine. Bring another big back in. I would rather have a guy that can throw the defense off when we run the big package with the two tight end sets, a speedy guy that can run out there and be another receiver or go in motion and become a slot receiver out the backfield and catch some passes, give him somebody to throw to. I don't want that big plunger guy anymore. That's not what I want. Bill's fan says, I agree. Allen takes too many hits at times. And think about this. Last year, he had the shoulder injury. The year before that, he had a shoulder or elbow injury. We yeah. have to be careful. This is our investment over the next 10 years. And I yeah. know what we like to see. We like to see bruising football from this guy. And he's exciting to see it like that. And he gets into the game when we see him like that. But we got to be really, really careful how we use him. And, and, and again, we got to make sure that we, we taking care of him as well because injuries are part of this game. Injuries are part of the NFL you have to protect your quarterback. You don't want him straining too much in a season. You want him to save some of that energy for the playoffs. Right now, I want you guys to like, share, subscribe to the channel Built in Buffalo. Do that right now. All right, Cousin Brad. So everybody's talking about wide receiver, and this is where we're going to open up the phone lines to get your feedback from our our listeners out there. Should we stay or draft your wide receiver at 28? Wait, be patient. Should we trade up or should we trade back? Cousin Brad, before we get to the phone lines, what's your thoughts? What should we do? I would would wait. There's a lot of... uh wide receiver capital coming out of this draft. If we were chasing for any other position, um, I would say trade up, but I think we have a lot of draft capital. So I will wait at, well, we're 28, right? We're 28. Mm -hmm. I will wait at 28, see where the cards fall and get our guy that we want. A lot of options. So I will wait. I agree. I a hundred percent agree with you. I've been saying stay at 28. You know, we can't afford to, um, trade all these picks. We got what eleven picks. We got eleven picks this year. I think eleven, or we might have lo- no. We got eleven picks this year. Okay, so I want every single one of them. I want to bring in eleven players. If 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 I can bring in more by trading back and getting another pick, I would do so. Um, but if Brian Thomas is there, 
if uh, my man from Penn State Chop is there, you make the pick. You make the now, pick. Hold up. Before we go to the phones. Now, if some miraculous, magical thing happens where someone wants to trade so we can get Marvin Harrison Jr., I trade all. I, no, I won't go Mike Dicker and trade all my picks. But to get that guy, I would trade a lot of picks for that guy. Just saying. Just throwing it out there. Okay. I disagree with you. And is Marvin Harrison Jr. Randy Moss? No. Okay. So you're potentially trading three picks to get up to that to the top ten or top fifteen yeah. where you probably go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can't do that. I can't do that for him because I feel like Brian Thomas is just as special physically. I'm not going to say he's as good. The production is there. The production is there. Leggett is production wise is there. Does that mean they're the same player? No. Does that mean he has the same champion? I mean, the same NFL DNA? Nah, but I, I, I can't. I can't do that. I can't. I can't do that. Cousin Brad. I said it on the show last week. If miraculously we draft Marvin Harrison Jr. Problem solved. We're probably going to go to the championship game. I'm just saying, just don't want to let you know. Parring any other injury, because injuries happened last year. Yeah. So, and, and to piggyback off what you said earlier about the Josh Allen thing, about the Josh Allen thing, I get it because if Josh Allen gets hurt, the season's over. So I get what you're saying. And I, okay, well, if we get a running back, all right, because he gets hurt, season's over. What do you think about neighbors? Uh, I've heard a lot about him. You know, I was really looking more into the bigger, faster, stronger receivers. But Malik, there's no denying Malik Neighbors is a very good player. I just don't see Great him fall past 12. I don't see him falling past 12 either. I think he'll be gone off the board. There are teams that need wide receivers, but if some miraculous way he gets us, I would absolutely uh, snatch him up in the first round. Dude's got all the tools, all the attributes. He can catch the ball. Not the biggest guy, but honestly, with this today's NFL, you don't have to be the biggest guy anymore. Yeah. I mean, it, it helps to have a bigger guy, but we saw that with Gabe Davis that it's, it doesn't work every time, right? Good luck, Jacksonville. <laughs> Um, Nickel City said, trade back. Do not trade up for a wide receiver. You know, and, and in this NFL that we're talking about today, um, running backs have become less and less valuable taking in the first round. And right. I, th I know a lot of people are not too high on taking wide receivers in the top 15. I think a lot of receivers are going to slip. I think a lot of wide receivers that we think are going to go in the top 10 are going to slip. We had a caller that called in last week who said, yo, some of these receivers might slip. And right. if there's only one receiver taken off the board by 10 or 15, you can say a lot of these guys might end up in the second round. What's your thoughts? True. A lot of these guys can end up in, end up in the second round. There are still, again, and, there, and not only in the draft, there are also trades that can happen. Yeah, T. Higgins just got the franchise tag on him. Justin Jefferson, they're looking to extend his contract. So money is a situation in Minnesota. We know how Minnesota like to get rid of receivers early. I mean, we've seen it in the past. So not only, you know, the, the draft is coming up, a lot of contract issues for certain receivers. So it's a lot of receivers out there that can absolutely – be uh picked up and receivers can fall so that's can that's 100 100 can happen i like this comment right here man receiver class is deep enough don't need to to trade up to get brian thomas jr leggett or mitchell etc these guys are are, are are projected to be there these are the guys that i've been mentioning i say you sit still sit patient now we'll, we'll get one of them if you get the inclination that somebody's gonna jump up like don't think i i, I think I think someone like Cincinnati could be a sneaky person looking for a wide receiver with the situations going on with T. Higgins, um, looking to to get them another young, big, physical receiver. There's someone sneaking up. So we got to be careful. But I think a lot of other teams that's in the top 15, they need trenches, guys. They need, they need defensive line, offensive line. You know, they need linebacker help. They need everything else other than really wide receiver. They don't need the sexy picks. You look at the top 10 um, 
top 10 guys in the draft. They, these guys are not drafting a wide receiver. That's true. That is true. That is true. One thousand percent. I mean, it all depends on where we're going as far as what we're doing next year. We already put it online. Josh Allen gets hurt. Season is over. So what are we going to do to ensure? I mean, we're going to we're not rebuilding. We're not in a rebuild mode, quote unquote. We can we still have enough talent to make the playoffs. But where are we going? Are we going to compete with the Chiefs again? Are we going to try to win our division? Or is this going to be a painful year to be a better next year? Like, where are we going? Like, we're, we last year, we were the hunted. We were the hunted team last year. This year, we're definitely hunters again. So we got the yeah. predatory factor back again. Shout out to our, 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 our brother from the 12th man, uh, Joey Hatch. Um, J- Joey, as much as I love this thought, Again, it takes me back to why did you trade Stefan Diggs if you wanted to get a big superstar receiver? I thought the the trading of Stefan Diggs mean reset, reset, build young guys around your superstar quarterback. I don't think that means go get another big bank receiver. I, I And that's the same problem I have with Brandon Ayuk. As much as I like it, and I know a lot of Bills fans were not patient. We want to see we want Super Bowl now. So we yeah. want to get guys that are, are ready to come in and plug in now. But that's not what Sean McDermott, Brandon Bean are doing. They are resetting here. They're resetting. They had that four-year window with, with Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen and and and, and uh, the, the, the SWAT team, uh, Tredavious White. They had these guys together. It didn't work. It didn't get us there. So it was I don't think trying to go for a sexy – big time receiver is the answer. I think the better answer is to build that team. And we saw that with Patrick Mahomes. The Chiefs could have, you know, I mean, look, the Chiefs they, won what? They got they rid of Tyreek Hill. They went two Super Bowls or one Super Bowl. No, they went to two Super Bowls with uh Tariq Hill. One, yeah. One one lost one. Yeah. So and then he went to two more Super Bowls and won two more. I mean yeah. I mean, it's really it's really a copycat league. I mean, I see what Brandon B. tried to do. He tried to emulate what the Rams did. He said, forget the draft picks. Bring in as many superstars as you can, and we're just going to buy our Super Bowl. That's what we're going to do. And I think we're in the same position as the Rams were last year. A lot of superstars left. We got to kind of play survival mode. Yeah, we might make the playoffs, but it's going to be hard. I think the Rams are primed for a good season this year. The Texans, same situation. We already know what happened with the Deshaun Watson situation, so I won't harp on that. But, yeah, it was a painful year. They got C.J. Stroud. They got, you know, guys on their offensive line. They got a great coach, and now they have Stephon Diggs. They are the hunter now. They're, they're the hunter now. A lot of th- That division is wide open. Derrick Henry is no longer a Titan. That division is wide open. So, yeah, there's one of them painful years where we see it's, it's one of those. Eh, we'll see what happens. Years, right? Bills fan feels that uh, if we don't trade up, we don't get a top five receiver. I disagree with that. I, I think disagree. we're going to get a top five receiver in this draft because, as I, if you look at the teams, uh, cousin Brad, can you you mind pulling up pull up uh, for us uh, the teams that are in the top ten? of the draft really quick. And you can mention them out there. These teams are not looking for wide receiver. Most of the teams uh, in yeah, the top 10 are not looking for a wide receiver. So a lot of these receivers that you don't realize, a lot of them, my brother, is going to slide. If they slide past 10 and 15, oh, we on. <laughs> we on. Okay. All right. So we're going to look at uh, the the draft order as far as team by team, who's going to pick. We got round one, Chicago Bears. Honestly, we have no idea where the Bears are going to go. We have no idea what direction that team is going in. We have no idea what they want to do. So number one is the Bears. I don't know where they're going to go. Same with the Washington Commanders. I have no idea what they're doing with that franchise. I I don't know where they're going to go. Can I just jump in? Go ahead. If if the Bears – and the commanders don't co quarterback. I don't know what to say. I, I, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's like, okay, Chicago, you traded Justin Fields to the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
you haven't had a good quarterback since Jay Cutler. You haven't had a Super Bowl winning quarterback since McMahon. I don't know where you're going. You never pick good quarterbacks. <laughs> so I don't know where you're going to go. Washington, same situation. Are you sold on the quarterback that you have now with he Heineke? Was it, is it, is Heineke. it even Heineke? Heineke, yeah. yeah. Is it him anymore or is it what's the other guy? I don't even know who's, who, their, who their quarterback is. Um, three, New England Patriots. Again, where are we going here? Like, how are we building this thing? You got the new coach. Belichick is not there no more. You want to create a whole new culture. Where are you going? Where are you going? You got Mac Jones. You got a couple of pieces there. Where you want to go from here? Chargers. I mean, come on, man. We already know where we already know where uh, Coach Harbaugh is going to go. We already know where he wants. He know he wants his guy. His guy is going to go. He's going to go with his Michigan guy. God, I hate his name, man. Okay. So yeah, we we know we're going to do. He's an ATL, by the way. So I don't even know who their quarterback is. It, who, who's, oh, Powell, Sam Powell. Sam Powell's their, quarter, their quarterback. Are you sold on Sam Howell? Howell, Howell. Um, yeah, I don't know if you sold on him, Washington. Uh, Arizona, again, have no idea what you're doing with that franchise. Uh, New York Giants, no idea what you're doing with the franchise. Tennessee <laughs> Titans, no idea what you're doing with that franchise. We could go down the list. ATL, do y'all have any idea what y'all doing with y'all franchise? Like, come <laughs> on, man. And then we got the Bears again at nine. So if I'm Buffalo, if I'm Buffalo, Chicago, it's a nice ninth pick you got there. Would love to get Marvin Harrison Jr. on this team. Sure would be nice if you could trade that pick to us for our first round and one of our seconds round that we just got from Houston. I mean, it could help you out. Let's just say you draft Kayla Williams number one overall. You're going to need some linemen to protect them. Just throwing it out there. Just if, throwing it out there. If you're saying trade this year's first and next year's second, I'm all for it. Right? There you go. But if you're saying a pick this year and a two picks this year, I'm saying no. I'm what saying no. If you're saying yeah. a first rounder, our 28, and our second round pick this year, I'm saying no. No, next year. I said next year. Our yeah. second, okay. Our 28. And our second round that we just got from Houston next year. Right. To me, I mean, I would, win. I would do that. I would do that. That's, if, if now, it, that's if, now that, again, that's if, if, if they draft Kayla Williams number one overall, which I think they will. I'm not sold on Kayla Williams. I like him. I think Michael Penix is better, but we'll see what happens. But I'm not sold on Kayla Williams. I loved him at Texas A&M. When he went to USC, I had no idea what they were doing with him. But okay. But yeah, uh, so going back down the lines, you got New York Jets. They got a lot of players. They got they they're pretty good. They're, they're they're looking for a good season this year. Minnesota at eleven, Broncos at twelve, Raiders at thirteen. Watch out for the Raiders. The Raiders are going to make a huge splash in this year's draft. Watch out for them. Uh, New Orleans is at fourteen. Indianapolis is at fifteen. Seattle's at sixteen. Jacksonville's at seventeen. Cincy is at eighteen. Rams nineteen. Steelers twenty. Dolphins 21, Eagles 22, Minnesota again uh, at 23, Dallas, Green Bay, Tampa Bay, Arizona again, then Buffalo, Detroit, Baltimore, and then uh, San Francisco. So Now, you mentioned Minnesota. Minnesota could be a sneaky because they got two first-round picks to snatch a receiver. Now, I, I, that's a True. possibility. Especially with all the situations surrounding Justin Jefferson right now, um, Go ahead. Dolphins don't see that. Don't see that either. Um, Jacksonville, after they just paid Gabe Davis, I don't see them doing that in the first round. I see them beefing up their line. Yeah. So uh, again, you mentioned a lot of teams, cousin Brad. That probably not until twenty eight, nineteen, twenty, where we'll see. Receivers start coming off the board the way I'm looking at it here. So you mentioned Minnesota. Now, Minnesota, you just got rid of Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is gone. So now do you move up with one of those first-round picks that you have to get Caleb Williams or Michael Pennants? I think you can. I think you can jump over. Let's look at the teams you're going to jump over. Arizona has uh, Kyler Murray. Los Angeles has, um, oh, man, the Chargers quarterback. What is his name? 
I'm sorry. Herbert. I'm blanking. Herbert. Justin Herbert. Herbert. Yes, Herbert. Um, you can jump one of those teams to get your guy. Uh, so a lot of, I mean, a lot of things can happen in the draft. In Minnesota, one thing about Minnesota, they are notorious for messing up the draft picks in the first round. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, definitely the Chargers. I mean, they traded both. They they got rid of Keenan Allen. They got rid of Mike Williams. They're looking to get a receiver. They will be a sneaky one to probably try to jump up to grab Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, Because they really, they reset completely at the wide receiver position. I think they're going in the same direction as us when it comes to Herbert's the leader. Keenan Allen probably put a lot of pressure on this young quarterback. Say, hey, give me the ball. Yeah, that defensive you know, line, um, a lot of money on that defensive line. So you got to free up some space and get Herbert some guys to throw to. Yeah, absolutely. All right, right now, I want you guys to make sure you go like, share, and subscribe to the Built in Buffalo channel. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right, phone lines are closed. Cousin Brad, we're going to go into our next segment, the winner sent. And I want to talk about this in two avenues. Um, I'm going to talk about it, and and a lot of us, we're going to move on from Stefan Diggs after this week, okay? Uh, Stefan Diggs brought us many thrills, and I know a lot of Bills fans are still talking about it, so we're going to talk about it too right here on the show. Um, I'm going to start here, and then I want you to tell us from the Texans' perspective, Cousin Brad, is it a winner sent for them? All right, for the Buffalo Bills, I'm going to say it's a win. Um, I'm big on turning the page on stuff that doesn't work. And your quarterback right now is your golden calf to winning the Super Bowl. He is the reason we've gotten to the playoffs the majority of times. Not to say Diggs didn't contribute, but I think the idea of building around Josh Allen where guys come in and say, hey, this is the guy. I have to catch balls for this guy. I have to try my hardest for this guy. It's no longer Josh Allen kind of being little broed by Stephon Diggs. And Stephon Diggs is demanding the ball when he's not open. Josh Allen forcing it into windows where he can't force it just to get this guy his touches so that he can get his incentives or whatever the case may be, or so he doesn't complain. Also, The relationship became the strain. You know, here's the thing, Cousin Brad, that, you know, when you have friends, right, and the media is constantly coming at you, friends and teammates, right, and you don't defend your quarterback, that's something that Stephon Diggs did not do. He had many opportunities to stand up for Josh Allen, and he did not. But every time Josh Allen was in the media, he stood up for Stefan Diggs. And to me, that it, if, it, if it don't go both ways, the friendship ain't real. So you can tell the relationship was a strain. And then we can, we ain't even going to get into the tweet about Bill's Mafia fans because I want to respect and love Diggs for what he did do for this fan base and not the little stuff that he, you know, he's moving on. Wish you the best, but don't hope you beat us. But the reality, Cousin Brad, is ultimately you get this guy out of the locker room. You get the build around guys around like Kincaid, whoever this rookie wide receiver is going to be. And automatically they know who their offensive leader is. Okay. Um, so, dude, you want me to go from the Texans or you want me to say if it's a winner sent for us? I mean, you can respond and then um, and then uh, go to the Texans if it's a winner sent for them. Okay, so it's a sin for me. It's a sin for me as far as the Buffalo Bills. Diggs, you're, he, he was our guy. He was our guy. Yeah, he's gone. I'm over it. It is what it is. But it was definitely a sin. You don't let that type of guy go. Josh and Diggs, you're going to let those guys run to the wheels fall off till one of them is hurt or, or one of them can't go anymore. That's your, that's your bread and butter. Yeah, he made a uh, disappointing drop in a playoff game that probably could have won us the game, possibly. Bass m- makes the kick. Maybe we go into overtime, and maybe we beat the Chiefs on our home turf this time. So 
I'm not going to necessarily say that's where the downfall was, but it's definitely put a big hole in our roster for this upcoming season. I don't know where this team is going. Are we in a rebuild? I don't think we're in a rebuild. We got a lot of pieces, so it's definitely a hole there. He definitely left a hole in the roster right there. So it's definitely a sin. I'm not going to vilify the guy. Was he the best teammate? Was he the model? Oh, my gosh, this is my guy. And this, No, no, he wasn't. Were there outbursts on the sidelines? Yes. Could they have been avoided? Yes. But dude's not a villain. He's not a terrible player. Like, he wasn't – a. he wasn't – there was no fights in the locker room as far as I know. I mean – it just didn't work. It wasn't meshing well. The media makes it look worse than what it is. So, Stefan, we salute you. Thank you for everything you did for the franchise. Best of luck in Houston. Now, as far as Houston, I'm just going to read off some names. C.J. Stroud, Joe Mixon, Nico Collins, Dalton Schultz, Noah Brown, Brendan Brev, uh, Brev, Breven Jordan, Tank Dell. Oh, yeah, and they have Stefan Diggs now. Absolute win for them. They were they were sensational last year. Under D'Amico Ryans, that whole team, they were absolutely amazing last year. CJ Stroud is for real, Ohio State guy all day. But now you add Stefan Diggs, they can knock the Chiefs off. They're young enough, they're fast enough, they're talented enough, and they're well coached. They can knock the Chiefs off. So 100% win for them. I, I 100% agree with you. Um, I really like the Texans. They're a young football team. You said it last week on the show. They're exactly what we were three years ago on the Absolutely. come up, on the rise, and made a very surprise run. I mean, who thought this, with the, a rookie quarterback that these teams would go to the division? I mean, did they? Yeah. Did, they went to the AFC. Yeah, they. <laughs> Listen, man, this team they is were one win away. One, one win, win away from making championship. Yeah, so I think it's a win for him, even though I know what comes with Stefan Diggs. I know what comes with Stefan Diggs. He's going to want the ball. Um, but the fact that it's a one-year contract, I think he's going to be on his best behavior. So yeah. uh, I think it's a win. You want to ride that wave, man. You want to ride that wave. Yes, yeah, a one-year contract. Pretty much if you Stefan Diggs, you plan to be on that team the following season because that team's going nowhere but up. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, cuz. All right, so, cuz, I got a question for you. And all the fans out there, what do the Chiefs have that the Buffalo Bills do not have? Okay, now, we're not talking about coaches. We're not talking about rings. Okay, so subtract coaches in the rings we're going to open up the phone lines in a bit but right now tell us in the chat room what what did the chiefs have roster wise that the buffalo bills do not have go ahead cuz uh they have patrick mahomes and we don't i'm just gonna be honest i'm gonna be honest man i'm gonna be honest that pains me to say it that pains me to my core to say that. But I'm just, if you ask the question, I got to answer it. They have Patrick Mahomes. We don't have him on our team. That's why they win. It's not Travis Kelsey. It's not their offensive line. You said we couldn't mention uh, Andy uh, coaches. So the answer to that question is they have Patrick Mahomes. We have Josh Allen. If you switch those two dudes, I don't know what happened. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say what happened, but they have Patrick Mahomes. We don't. I agree. I agree. Um, look, man, and I've I've gotten to debates with people, many people, many of our own Bills fans, who uh, you know, yes, we believe in our team, but we accept reality for what reality is. It's just yeah. another mindset. It's a championship mindset that this young man has. He doesn't care. He didn't care before he became a champion. He didn't care. He didn't care when he played against Brady. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that loss actually helped propel him to where he is today. 
Right. When he barely lost to Brady, need I need I mention. So yeah. I you know, unfortunately, Josh is not yet where Patrick Mahomes is. Physically, yes. He do just about everything, and Josh can make any throw. Patrick can't make every throw. Okay. Josh literally, when it comes to physical specimen, he's a better physical specimen than uh Patrick Mahomes. But it's the mindset. It's the championship pedigree, the mindset of you're in my way. I don't see you because I'm too focused on that end zone. That's the yeah. difference between Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen right now. Is mm -hmm. there's other distractions going on that's been over the past few seasons. And possibly Stefan Diggs was one of them. But Patrick Mahomes. He didn't let that distract him. And they, when they got rid of Tariq Hill, he was like, great player. We won a Super Bowl with him. Much respect, much love. But I can build, I can do this without you. And he did it, what, one, two, three times? Yeah. I mean, come on, man. I mean, this, it is what it is. And, and he hasn't, not saying Josh doesn't have the potential to get there. I believe he does. But he's not, he hasn't been there the past few years, hopefully. He gets there. Uh, Chris Jones was mentioned, too. What do you think about Chris Jones? I think he's a great defensive player, but, I mean, we have defensive players on our roster that are just as good. But let's just be honest. Patrick Mahomes is a different animal. They changed a rule because of Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen. Like, he gets the ball. I'm I'm afraid. I'm I, I'm going to call a spade a spade. He gets the ball last, I'm afraid. And it's time and time again, time and time again, we see why. We see why I'm afraid. Josh Allen get the ball, he might throw an interception and give it, you know, give it to the other team. Patrick Mahomes has the ball, I'm afraid. So it's that Jordan factor, like, keep him off the field. Keep him off the field. Josh Allen doesn't have that yet. Josh Allen is literally better than every other quarterback in the NFL. Mm, okay. He is literally better than every other quarterback in the NFL. And I can say that with confidence. But this that. guy, it's the mindset. It, it, it's, And this is why I'm so big on adding champions to your roster, because they bring an aura, a pedigree. And we have that. You got Vaughn Miller, you know. We had Mitch Morris, who won a championship. But I cannot sit here, and in, 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 in probably coaches matter too. You know, when you have coaches on your team who've won championships. Before Andy Reid won a championship with the Chiefs, I mean, he was constantly in these games in the NFC with Terrell Owens and Donovan McNabb. And they were in championship games. He was in Super Bowls. I mean, Sean McDermott had been in a Super Bowl. Um, and he didn't win at that time. Andy Reid did not win at that time. So um, championship pedigree matters. The mindset matters because sometimes a player can make it about themselves and the other player instead mm -hmm. of my team versus your team. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think sometimes Absolutely. Josh can get caught up in that. Cincinnati game, he was looking past Cincinnati and thinking about the Chiefs, clearly. And what happened? Joe Burrow drilled you <laughs> you right at home you know so uh we have to get back to that, that that buffalo bill pride where if you play us in buffalo in in you know in the snow in december like it's going to be brutal for you we can't continue I, to lose in the playoffs that's that's not enough that's not it's not enough anymore it, it's not enough anymore I'm, I'm sorry that that whole mystique coming in here in the winter time it's not enough it was not enough to take the Chiefs down last year. It wasn't enough to take down Cincy the year before. I, I'm just being real. I'm just being real. This year is gonna is not gonna be our best year. It's gonna be a. I don't want to say it's a rebuild until the following season, but that's kind of what it's looking like. I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest here. I don't know where we're going in the draft. We'll see after the draft, but this year is gonna be real painful. It's going to be painful. The Jets are are better now. They have Aaron Rodgers back. I don't know if that's going to really work. We'll see. They have a talented roster. Miami's coming back. They have a talented roster. 
Houston is awesome. Don't forget about the Ravens. This year, it might not be our best year. Unless we can find a way to knock off Kansas City. That whole play Buffalo in January, that whole thing is out the window now. Like, I, don't, I don't even have that anymore. It worked yeah. against Pittsburgh. It works against Miami. It worked against the Patriots. It didn't work against Cincinnati. It didn't work against Kansas City. So I think that whole pride thing is out the window now. Yeah, until we restore it. Until we restore it. Uh, Bob, second half adjustments. This is very, very true. I mean, yeah. we were up in that Kansas City game halftime, right? I true. mean, halftime adjustments, and we've seen this throughout the season, Cousin Brad. And I always say this when it comes to a season. A season is preparation for what you're going to see in the playoffs. That's really what it is. You need to win enough games in the season to get you to the playoffs. You don't give all you got to the season. You win just enough games, and this is why I mentioned we got to take hits off Josh because we need him for that playoff run to be healthy mm -hmm. and to be energized, right? And that's mm – -hmm. but also second-half adjustments, coaching. Now, we're not talking about the rings between Andy Reid and, and Sean McDermott. Talk right. about second half adjustments. This is something that Sean McDermott has struggled. We come out, we're dominating, right? They go to halftime. Teams have went to halftime and switched it up on us, and we didn't know what to do. That's yeah. that's low football IQ. That's you know low comes, football IQ. And you know what it comes back to? Let's just be real. Let's just be real. We were afraid Patrick Mahomes was going to beat us in the second half. That's exactly what he did. That second half, it was a chess match. We were up. We were playing afraid. We were playing, we said, okay, we don't want him to beat us. We, we don't. Anybody else beats us, that's fine. We don't want him to beat us, and we ended up beating ourselves. We didn't factor that in. So that's one, one, of, the things. That's one of the things. He said, okay, yeah, we're going to go ahead. He got here. He got the ball. We got the ball back. We're going to drive down the field. We're going to kick a field goal. We didn't want Patrick Mahomes to beat us, and we ended up beating ourselves. That's that factor that they have that we don't. We were so afraid of him beating us, we wanted to tie the game rather than winning. So, right, and and that's something that I saw with Dan Campbell that I liked. Right, I think they yeah. were in. Um, was it the Niners? Aggressive. No. Who? They were playing aggressive. They played aggressive, they, and Dan Campbell they played to win. They played Dallas. They played Dallas. Remember yes. that on Sunday Night Football? They played yes. Dallas, and he went for the win. It was win exactly. or lose. Okay? And people were yes. saying he should have just kicked the field goal and Ooh. trust the defense to go stop him. He said, no, we, we went to do double overtime. Let's win, win it or go home. And I, and I, I respect like that. that. I respect that. Exactly. I respect that. I respect that. I'm going to die on my own sword. I respect that 100%. I want a dude that wants to win. I don't want a guy that plays not to lose. I don't like that. I hate losing rather than I'm a like. It, what's that? What's that quote? Kobe said, "I am so afraid of losing rather than afraid of not winning." If that that was a Kobe quote, I think. Mm -hmm. I'd yeah. rather play to win. I, I think Josh Allen has that mentality, but I think his McDermott is different on that. McDermott is more. Game management. You know, we talked about Cam Newton when he mentioned about the game management, right? Yeah. Funny that, you know, McDermott was the defensive coordinator when Cam Newton was playing. And this is what we're talking about right here. You got a yeah. guy that's all in and, you know, all or nothing. You you, you give him the benefit of the doubt. You trust him with the ball. I think, I think this is what we're going to see this year. Turnovers are going to be down because there's not going to be that demand for the ball from Stephon Dix. So the ball is going to get spread around. Guys who are open are going to get the ball. So I think that's going to be a good thing. Um, but there's going to be a lot of guys that's unproven that have to prove themselves and that Josh exactly. Allen has to grow to trust. It's the pro that's the problem. That's where we run into the, def the, the disconnect. Because, yeah, we don't have digs. You don't have to force him the ball. But now Josh has got to play a lot of hero ball. I'm just calling the spade a spade. Like Curtis Samuel, Ohio State guy, he not Stefan Diggs. Love Khalil Shakir. Hope he has a bright career ahead of him. He's not Stefan Diggs. Love Dalton Kincaid and Dawson Knox. Both of those dudes are proven players. They're not Stefan Diggs either. 
So these Josh is going to have to play a lot of hero ball. So, I mean, Joe Brady is going to have to scheme something together to say, okay, let's let everybody else pick up the slack to where we don't have to worry about Diggs, just like the Chiefs did when they had to worry about Tyreek Hill anymore because they didn't fall off. They didn't They didn't have a dip. <laughs> they went right back to the AFC Championship the next year. So, And, and, and that's – that that's a system. Yeah. That's that's what a system does, a plug and play system. You know, you mm-hmm. keep your core together, right? And mm-hmm. your system is so good and you trust in your system so well. Bill Belichick did this for many years that yeah. hey, if your system works. And that's another thing about Diggs. I don't believe he believed in the system anymore. So, and the system changed mid-season last year. So, we're we're, we're this reset these guys are coming into a system and they have to get ingratiated into the system. So I think that's 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 uh, going to be better for the Buffalo Bills. And everybody's saying Patrick Mahomes, that they agree that Patty Mahomes is the difference between the Buffalo Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs. All right, so if you want to have some thoughts on anything that we talked about today on the show today, please give us a call at one. 1- Five one five six zero two nine six nine four, and we'll love to take your comments before we wrap it up here, cousin Brad. I think um, we we definitely need to consider running back um, in the draft, and I'm not talking about in the first rounds. I'm talking about like third, fourth, fifth. Um, running back is a key thing. Safety is a need. What's your thought on our safeties currently? Do you feel that the safeties that we have right now with Mike Edwards from the Chiefs, champion. We talked about champions, right? Championship pedigree he brings. And also, uh, Tyler Rapp we brought back, who is a champion as well, okay? Um, do you feel like we upgraded or downgraded a little bit? I don't know. I don't know until we see them play. Um, Christian Benford, Rasul Douglas, excellent players. They they plug right in, and there was no drop off. There was actually an improvement. So Christian Bedford and Rasul Douglas, absolute set at the corners, but Rap and Edwards, I will have to see us on. I will have to see what's on the field. We have to see how it fits on the field. In theory, um, they would. You know, I, I don't want to say they would fill the holes that Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer left. I would say, as of right now, they keep us afloat. They keep us afloat. Yeah. I was looking for more of a thumper. And, uh, you know, like the guy from Indy that we was looking at. Um, Mm -hmm. But, I mean, he's had injury issues, so that's a whole other thing. But the thing is, Mike Edwards, I mean, he's sufficient. He's sufficient for now. He's not the long-term option. He's on a one-year deal. I don't see him as the long-term. I like rap. I do like him more at the free position than uh, in the in the box type of guy. Um, I don't believe he's the long term answer, and I've said this on many shows, many shows, all the way up until last season that just passed. I want to see Elam train to become a safety. He has the size. Mm-hmm. He's six three. He's mm-hmm. two oh five. He runs a four three. You got to find, and this is what I say about McDermott. When you have talented players, physical specimens, you have to find a place for them on your roster. They may not play the position that you, that they were drafted to play. Okay. Right now, we're set at corner, I think. I think we're good with Douglas. We're good. And Benford. Which which the question mark right now is safety. And Teron Johnson. We forgot about him. We got to show him some love. We yeah, keep, he keeps getting him. forgot about. He keeps getting forgot about like he's not there. Dude is probably the best nickel corner in the business. Nickel right. corner. Nickel right. corner. Agreed. Agreed. Absolutely agreed. But, I, I, again, we've had so many problems tackling guys like Kelsey. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't believe Taylor Rapp is hitting Kelsey. I mean, no. I don't, I don't see that. I mean, Mike Edwards might know them a little bit, but I don't see him hitting him. I was looking for a bigger safety, a guy that's a little bit bigger, about 6'1", that can tackle um, and has ball skills, obviously. You're not going to get another Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer right away. That's going to take time. 
Right. All right, we got a call right here. Let's take a call. Uh, seven one six two zero eight. You are on Buffalo against the world with Kulu and cousin Brad. Talk to us about what's your thoughts on what do the Chiefs have that the Buffalo Bills don't have roster wise. What's your thoughts? Hey, what's up, y'all boys? This is D. How y'all doing? What's good, D? What's up, D? What up? Yeah, what's going on? I see y'all still through y'all thing, man. Keep it up. Keep it up. Thanks, bro. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks, you. Bro. Um, the what obvious answer is Patrick Mahomes. Um, a lot of people are probably pointing to Andy Reid, but when we talk about players on the field, right now Mahomes is in his Jordan era. He's in his bag. So what we have to do is we focus on the before we made a run at him. It didn't work. Mm-hmm. We have to retool ourselves, get ourselves back straight. So then we can compete with Patrick Mahomes again because right now there is no team in the NFL that's ready to compete with the Chiefs. It now, is not. Now, D, now D, here's a question for you. Um, physically, Josh Allen, many would say, is better than Patrick Mahomes. What do you think is that missing, that missing element? And, and, and we know about the rings. We know about the rings. We know about the championship experience. But what? is missing is it is it do you think Diggs being gone kind of elevates josh to that that mentality as the undisputed leader of the buffalo bills it had to now because now he's the main he was one of the main voices when Diggs was here so now Diggs is gone now you have to take the reins of of the offense and let everybody know follow you're following my lead that's that's what he has to do now. Now the pressure is on him to take what he has at his disposal and make it work for him, just like Patrick Mahomes did when Tyree Hill left. Absolutely, absolutely. You know his contemporaries do it all the time, so he should, he has the talent. That I think he will do it. To be honest with you. Yeah, absolutely, man. D man, appreciate the call, man. D was uh, one of our partners from. The uh, Fan Cave, man, shout out to D. Always showing love, man. Much love to D and the Thanks, Fan D. Cave. Um, so, yeah, I mean, with with that being said, Cousin Brad, Josh Allen has to elevate his game for us to get to a Super Bowl. Period. Period. There's no, there's no way around it. And now the distraction is gone. The, super, the other superstar on offense is gone. The other uh, the, the superstar center is gone. We ain't even talk about the center position. That's something that's got to be addressed in the draft as well. We've been talking about possibly Kyler uh, 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 McGovern moving over to the center position. So right. maybe that will happen, but you still got a hole there at offensive line. And this offensive line played very well. I mean, I think this was the best offensive line we've had in the last five years. Absolutely outstanding. At Osiris Torrance, we stole him in the draft. Uh, a dude was a straight stud the entire year, so uh, outstanding. They played. They played absolutely outstanding. I, I just don't know where, what direction this team is going to go in, because now you know we didn't even mention this. Cincinnati is back. Joe Burrow is back. Joe Burrow went down last year. They still beat us, but we were better than them. If that makes any sense, like they still beat us, but we were the better team. So. Yeah. I don't know what direction to see because that's that's the only Jordan killer. That's the only Patrick Mahomes killer is Cincinnati. But right, the rest right. of the AFC is catching up, man. Right. All right, we got another caller calling from this seven one six five five three. Welcome to Buffalo against the world with Kulu and cousin Brad. Talk to us. Kulu and cousin Brad, how y'all doing, man? This is good to see y'all face in the play. <laughs> My brother, what's going on with you? Thank you very oh, much. Man, slow lane, you know what I mean. I know you probably don't remember me, but uh, hey, you know I, I I used to talk with you in the hallway. Of uh-huh. this school over there, off of what was that, Worley or something like that, with my little boy Vincent, you know. But uh-huh, good okay. to see you, man. Good to see you and and all the stuff that you, you know, you've been doing, man, and educating everybody on Ted and everything else, you know. <laughs> but now back to the subject at hand. Thank Here you, we bro. go. Appreciate you, Josh Allen. All right, I'm gonna get a whole lot of people, man. That's gonna 
call you up and they're going to say, what's the matter with that dude? You know, he ain't a real Buffalo Bills fan and everything else. But, you know, this is how I look at it. I, I, I try to get the big picture, all right? I see whenever anything happens, like over on Hurdle, they had Josh Allen jumping over one of the uh, street signs, mm-hmm. all right? They got, during the eclipse, Josh Allen jumping over the moon, okay? <laughs> it seems to me like they're like people are just building him up so much. It's like Josh Allen is, is God's gift to Buffalo, New York, and football in general. With all these other players gone and with your boy McDermott last year saying, this isn't going to be like we're tearing the whole team down and a rebuild All right, but look exactly what he did. Now, it's all about can you even put Josh Allen in that same category as Patrick Mahomes? Mahomes has been to a Super Bowl. Allen hasn't been to a Super Bowl. Yeah, he's gotten close, but the thing is, when it comes to the point in time when, hey, everybody's got to be clicking on the same page, all right, it all comes back to the quarterback, so they say. And I think that's one reason why your boy Diggs pulled up out of, out of the area because he, like every, a lot of other players, hey, they're getting older. They want that ring. And I look at it like this, and I talk with people all the time about this one. When it comes to Vaughn Miller, all right, they should have let him go because Vaughn is tele Vaughn is telegraphing. He wants to be Brandon Bean. He wants to learn how to go and sit upstairs and pick people out. He's not ready. <laughs> he don't want to play no football no more. So, you know, I just wanted to get my little two cents off and yeah. hey man, do your thing, you know. I'm gonna be sitting back listening to you, man, and hey, you you you're doing good. Thank you, my brother. I greatly appreciate you, man. Man, listen, that's a very interesting perspective there, uh, Cousin Brad. Um, look, yeah. I, I, you know, this is something that has been said. A lot of Bills fans feel that perhaps, perhaps, Stefan Dick stopped believing in this team. Perhaps he stopped believing in McDermott. Perhaps he stopped believing that this championship window that has been talked about all over the, the, the net is closing. You know, um... And, I mean, I think this reset really was to save McDermott. I'm, I'm, I'm going to sit here, and I said it last week. I believe if you don't reset and you come back here with the same roster, some of the same core guys, and you get the same result, it's going to fall on McDermott's head. McDermott had to let those guys go, or a good amount of those older guys who they wanted to bring in and, and pull that, that, that Rams way of trying to do things and try to buy a championship with paying all of these guys all of this money, and it didn't work. It didn't work, and now they're saying, okay, McDermott, we're going to give you some younger players, better players, your players that you're going to draft, make it work this time. They're going to give them another four years to try to make it work. What's your thoughts? I mean, it's been McDermott's team for going on, what, six seasons now. Like he's drafted the guys, he's brought Brandon Bean has brought guys into free agency, and they've built this championship literally. They built this team literally from the ground up. Before Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott got here, this team was an embarrassment. Let's just call a spade a spade. We we didn't make the playoffs. He brought a team back, and sometimes you're absolutely right. We need a guy to get us over that hump. Are there coaches out there that can possibly do that? Maybe. I will say maybe. I don't say yeah. I don't want to say definite yes. But I don't think McDermott is the issue. Let's just, again, I'm going to say it again. This is going to be a red shirt year. If y'all follow college football, this is a red shirt year where you say, honestly, I don't have any expectations. It's like if we make the playoffs, hey, how about that? If we don't, like, all right, we tried. But this is no. the year where you see – we hold on, wait, wait, wait. This is the team. This is the year where you see what your team and your veteran leadership are made of. Because if, if your veteran leadership are like, hey, man, we're going to let y'all go out there and we're going to see what happened. But if your veteran guys can rally around the losses that we just got in April and make a run at this thing, that's veteran leadership on another level. I, so, I, I Cousin Brad, I can't accept that. I, as a diehard Bills fan with 17, I can't accept a red shirt year. I can't. I cannot, especially when 70% of the reason why we were in the playoffs is because of 17. 
I absolutely right. cannot accept that. Uh, let's take another call. This is going to be our last call of the night. 716-940. You are on Buffalo Against the World with Kulu and Cousin Brad. And I know tensions is hot, but make sure we don't have any profanity on this show. So please keep that out of it. What's your thoughts? Hello, everybody. It's Joey Hatch again. Joey, what's good, my Joey. brother? Man. Man. Always a pleasure. Um, I just got to throw a little something out there. Now, Josh Allen, come from a small town, had no big stars around him, didn't get much publicity because he didn't have a lot of recruiting or anything like that. He, you know, one star, I think he was, or something like that, right? Patrick Mahomes has been around big time players his whole life. They have groomed Patrick Mahomes. He was around the Yankees when they were winning championships because of who his family was. He has he has been brought along for a long time. Josh Allen had none of that. So if we're talking about players, my player is Patrick Mahomes and Chris Jones. Because if Chris Jones did not bull rush Dawkins into Josh Allen, that would have been a touchdown to Shakir. So that's my defensive player. Offensive player would be Patrick Mahomes because he's been groomed for this and Josh hasn't had that chance in his life. Now, am I saying Josh cannot get there? No, I'm not. Josh is way physically more talented than him. He just does not have the accolades as of right now. I love that call. Beautiful call. Thanks, Joey. We appreciate you. Listen, um, yep, I love that call. And I always love when Joey calls. Um, but Shout out to him. I always love that. We, we get into, me and you, we get into this conversation, right? We get into this debate about Jordan and, Le- and LeBron, right? Um, and we look at just you know, LeBron me. wasn't really groomed. He was kind of declared the best in the world or the heir apparent to Michael Jordan when he really didn't even go to college or prove anything. I think right now, Josh Allen's in that boat. Physical talent. He's in that boat. Where he wasn't groomed, Joey makes a very good point. He really wasn't groomed by any championship pedigree. Really, Sean McDermott is really the closest guy who's had championship. Pre- well, Brian Dable as well. Brian Dable won a champion and a national championship. Um, but that's it. He hasn't really been groomed by champions, and that may be the difference between, you know, and and. And you look at a lot of this. We talked about this in history because I'm big in history. And for all those who really know me, they know that if you go back and look at some of these players, like in these coaches, they learn from somebody. You know, Andy Reid, you know, and then he he passed it down to Sean McDermott. Andy Reid comes from the home country. You know what I'm saying? Look at all of these guys. Belichick came from the Parcells tree. These guys passed the knowledge down for the next generation. And we saw that. So McDermott is part of that Andy Reid tree. So hopefully he gets it. But I mean, I, I think um I think he has a very good point there. What's your thoughts on that? Either you got it or you don't. Because we see this go either way. I mean, we see this go either way. Patrick Mahomes' dad did play for the twins. I think he did have a stint with the Yankees, so yeah. I mean, you can probably pick stuff up as far as George Steinbrenn. I'm a die-hard Yankee fan. You can pick stuff up. Patrick Mahomes went to Texas Tech. They weren't that good. Like, they weren't that good when he was there. Um, Josh Allen didn't have any. Uh, he went Juco. He was an absolute star in Juco. Went to Wyoming. And they're not scaring anybody in the Mountain West Conference. But it really depends on who you are. I mean, you say, you know, Belichick fell off the uh, the the um, Parcells tree. Yeah, and Bill O'Brien fell off the Belichick tree, and we see what happened there. Josh McDaniels fell off the Belichick tree. We've seen what happened there twice. So, I mean, Matt Patricia went to the Lions. They were awful, and then went back to the Belichick tree. Joe Judge, another one. I can go on and on with names to where you said they have Pat, Pat, uh, Pat um championship pedigree and it doesn't work out so that's a possibility i mean we're gonna see what this team is made of this is a make i don't want to say make or break year for sean mcdermott it probably is but we're gonna see where this team heart lies are you gonna roll over and die for this season or are you gonna rise to the occasion and surprise some people 
That's what his team is. But as far as pedigree and you bred for this, bro, either you got it or you don't. Well, you know, and I'll say this. You two players can have similar physical attributes, right? And Josh Allen physically was compared to Patrick Mahomes as soon as he came into the league. I mean, they did that throwing contest, you know, literally before – uh, Josh Allen came into the league, they were saying that Patrick Mahomes had the strongest arm they had ever seen until Josh Allen came. So right there, measurable-wise, their ways of getting away from defenses and scrambling the ball, both of them were able to do that. So they were compared. But this is what I really like from um, Joey's point, is, and this goes to our comment here, we're learning from Alex Smith too. Let's not talk like Alex Smith didn't get these guys to AFC championships a few times before, before even, uh, I think he even went to a Super Bowl. Alex Smith went to the Super Bowl with the Chiefs while Patrick Mahomes was there. So he did not. they were already on that way, on that path. They just needed that one player that was going to take them to the next level. So Alex Smith also plays a role and that's all valuable to a young quarterback. You know, when you're groomed to say, hey, when are, when, we're, we're winning, we're, we are already our winning culture. We just might need a one or two players to take us over the hump. Alex Smith did not go to a Super Bowl. Um, Alex Smith was pretty good in San Francisco, came to um, Kansas City. They went to the playoffs, but they never, he never yeah, went to a Super Bowl. Yeah, I'm mistaken. I don't even remember them doing that. Who yeah, did they, they play? Did. The Patriots? I believe so. When did that happen? Yeah. I um because I don't remember them making it past yeah. the first round. They Alex Smith has been He's great. I mean, great dude, dude's a great player and whatever, you know, everything Alex Smith been through with his leg situation in Washington. Shout out to Alex Smith. To me, in my book, Alex Smith the Patriots, no. they played Patriots and they lost. Let me see the year here. Um, and uh, okay, here we go. We have the divisional round. They went to the divisional. They went to the wild card in 18. Mm -hmm. 17, they lost in a divisional. And 15, they played the Patriots in the AFC championship. Okay. All right, that makes sense. Shout out to uh, Alex Smith, but um, yeah, um, so Alex Smith, come on, we have a team that's competing. Yeah, they were, they yeah, they were right there. They were right there. Patrick Mahomes just got him over the top. Um, but Alex Smith, he, I mean, he had definitely have some uh, development as far as Patrick Mahomes going. But Andy Reid has been breaking quarterbacks since I've been alive. So let's not forget that that's a huge factor. On what he's, you know, what Patrick Mahomes is able to do. He bred Brett Favre in Green Bay, bred my favorite quarterback of all time in Donovan McNabb in Philly. Did the same thing over in uh, Kansas, doing the same thing now. He's just now getting his accolades. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is a factor, though, cousin Brad. And, um, but at the end, at the end of the day, you know, in this league, you can prepare your body, but when you have an athlete that's just as good as an athlete as you are, but has the mind and has the mind frame, and this coach has the mind frame of winning, it's 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 a world full of difference. It's a world difference in that player's career. All right, we're 20 minutes over time here, man. It was a great show, a lot of great calls. Uh, we really appreciated everyone coming on with us today. Look, man, the draft is coming up. And uh, the, whatever picks that the Buffalo Bills are going to make is going to really determine whether this team can make another playoff push and possibly a Super Bowl run. What's your thoughts? Okay, before we go, I know we've been talking about the show, and I'm sorry I should have did this earlier too. We got to give a shout-out to you, man. We got to give a shout-out to you. Educator of the Year for Buffalo Public Schools, a finalist. We didn't talk about that at the beginning. Of, that's how humble of a person that you are. So I definitely want to give you your flowers before we get off the air right now. Uh, my yeah. co-host, Emmanuel Kulu, nominated for Educator of the Year for Buffalo Public Schools. So shout-out to you, my guy. I should have said that at the beginning, but I didn't think about it. But shout-out to you. Man, thank you, man. I appreciate you, man. Look, man. 
hey, we got to know ourselves, man. Know thyself is my theme. And it's really important that we teach our children the truth about life. So with that being said, man, thank you, Cousin Brad. I salute you, man, and uh, being a great co-host that you are and every ride that we've done and we've done it together. So let's keep this going. Buffalo against the world. As always, make sure you like, share, subscribe to the Built in Buffalo platform. Built in Buffalo is the reason why Buffalo against the world is here. So if you want to keep hearing more of us and all the other great shows, Make sure you like, share, subscribe to this channel. We out. All right, P.O.J.